We're here once again at the garage with legendary race car driver John Fitch. Uh, John is the man who really put the, the Corvette on the map as a race car in America. In fact, this racing Corvettes in the early years, he's out here for a big event at the Peterson, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be this afternoon. Right. Yes. Right, Sorry. right, right. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't know that your, your great, great, great grandfather Always in, way back, invented yeah. the steamboat. That's right. He took uh, Benjamin Franklin out for a ride. Is That's that correct? That's right. Yes, signers of the Declaration okay. of Independence, and he presented to George Washington and so on. Well, it's pretty amazing. Now, I know <laughs> you, you've been racing, obviously, since the early 50s. I know you're a World War II hero as well. I know you're a little <laughs> modest about that, but you're a wonderful hero, and you, you flew how many missions? Oh, gosh, lost count. Lost count, out a lot of, of missions. Out of England, out of North missions. Africa, and then back to England again for another session. Right. How old are you now, 91 or 92? I'm, I'm 91, don't no, exaggerate. 90, <laughs> not, don't exaggerate, 91. And you're still racing. You raced well, as I'm, recently uh, as a couple years ago. Go. It's a pushover, you know. It's yeah. a piece of cake Go out to the salt flats. Right. Step on the accelerator. There's nothing to hit. There's thousands of <laughs> acres of right. salt flats, and you couldn't get in trouble if you tried. And you are also oh. the only American on the Mercedes-Benz racing team. Yes, I am. I'm very proud of that right. uh, because it was, a, mm, gosh, for arguably the best racing team in history. Right, right. And I saw it close up, and I believe it. <laughs> so how did you get hooked up with Corvette? How did that happen? Oh, that well, let's see now. I read in the paper that the Corvette was going to be introduced in New York City, and I made a point of being there. Now, were you disappointed when you saw the Corvette? It was a six cylinder oh. with a two speed automatic. Oh. Were, you, were you a little oh, disappointed it was at first? a miserable car. <laughs> Absolutely miserable. Horrible no, car. No wonder a Thunderbird outsold it right. to be hell. Right. But Ed Cole designed this brilliant small. V8 right. and dropped it in this car. And that's a story in itself because that was the only decent part the car had. Right, right. It was a shortened two door sedan Chevrolet, that's all it was, right. with a fiberglass body. Ed Cole, who was a general manager of Chevrolet, mm -hmm. asked Briggs Cunningham, who was a leader, uh, team owner, great experience, six times at Le Mans and so on. Ask him to come to Detroit to discuss who he should get to run a team and organize a team for Corvette. And Briggs recommended me. And of course, you are also responsible. When I was a kid, one of my favorite cars was the, the Fitch Corvair. Really? Tell us about that. It was a Corvair Sprint, yes. Right. Well, uh, I modified the Corvair to make a sports car out right. of a commuter car. And I just changed the suspension, I changed the steering ratio, right. I changed the brake capabilities and uh, did styling things too. Right. It was almost like an American Porsche. That was the idea. Yeah, because exactly. I remember reading the road tests of the period and people loved the car. Yes, they did. Uh, crazy about it. And then you also did, because we're sitting in front of my Tornado, uh, you, you also modified the Toronado. Yes, I did. Uh, this was done for the manager at the time and their chief engineer, Ted Lucas. They wanted an outside view of what, how the car should develop. So we did a lot of interesting things. We took the wheels and <laughs> split them down the middle and put a spacer in them. Right. So it was a wide rim. Right. And um, put r experimental radial Goodyear tires, and you know what radial tires do for the right. car's handling, it's just wonderful. So we got a free boost with that. Right, sorta. right, right. But we redid the transmission, and the, we d reduced the power steering, and the power brakes, which were terribly down, right. sensitive, right, and right. Not, not pleasant to drive at right, all. Right. And um, a lot of obvious things. And, and we, you you also involved in safety in racing, too. You, oh, you brought a lot of safety innovations well, to the game. Well, good night. Uh, I had the um, greatest stimulus for doing something about it because my co-driver on the Mercedes team, Pierre Levesque, a Frenchman, crashed, no fault of his own, right. in the 55 Le Mans. 85 spectators were killed. I remember that. 85. If anybody's seen that uh, footage where the car literally 
left, uh, did it go up on the car in front of it? Is that yes, what it, it did. It literally yeah. launched the yeah. car into yes, the crowd. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But you, didn't you help introduce the safety barriers and some of the other things as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. As yeah. a result of that experience, I struggled with this. There was no way of stopping an out of control car without injuring the occupants. And I finally, it's occurred to me that Newton's laws of conservation of momentum, when you accelerate a mass by another mass, it accelerates the impacting mass. And I, I figured it out uh, on paper, and my golly, it looks as though it worked. And I couldn't get GM and people uh, in the industry interested. I had to do it myself. So I got some junk cars, and I got some liquor crates from the local liquor store. Right. They're very strong vertically. Right. And did you get rid of the liquor first before you put them <laughs> Oh, off? yeah, I got rid of that. <laughs> and uh, ordered sandbags from right. the local sand gravel company. And I set up a row of these and ran into this row of masses of sand. And it worked to the pound and right. to the second. Right. It was incredible. Walter Cronkite was a racer friend That's right, of mine, Walter Cronkite was a driver. And he well. was the spokesman for Union Carbide. And through him, I talked to some of their engineers, and by golly, Union Carbide got behind it. Oh, they built wonderful. the plastic barrels. I couldn't do that, right, you know. Right. $50,000 for a mold to make right. them. They did all this on the cuff, and I paid them later. Wow. It was wonderful. Because in your day, the guys, it was mostly just shirt sleeves, not even seat belts, right, in the early days? Oh, that's right. You, you just no. sort of, and drivers right. would yeah. get killed three or four, even more season, correct? Oh, it was um, really terribly dangerous. I have to wonder what I'm being saved for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better hurry. <laughs> Were you ever seriously injured? No. Yeah. I should have been at yeah. uh, Reims because we had a, a late Cunningham before we knew anything about aerodynamics. And we had, we pointed the ends and made an, an interesting body. And we found out we designed a, a poor airfoil. Yeah. It took off. Oh, it went off and set it down. <laughs> it took off at Dreams and I crashed heavily. I know yeah. I was going 140 because long, long distance race. You, you get into a routine, and right. I knew exactly where I was when I crashed and so on. I was about 140. The car finally went end over end. Magliolia was following me in a Ferrari. We were leading the race, and he said the car tumbled higher than the telephone poles. Wow. The roadside. wow. And I had a five-point harness, which is the first one any racing team used. Briggs Cunningham was very... Uh, safety-minded and protective of his crew and everybody. He's a wonderful person. And that saved me, I'm sure, because yeah. the car tumbled. And, and and you're still out there now, and you're still racing, correct? Well, yeah. uh, sort of. Sort of, uh, yeah. To yeah. Uh, the salt flats, but yeah. it's a piece of cake, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to hit. <laughs> and how uh, fast did you go the last time oh, you were out? Oh, 150 or 60. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, we not, went that yeah, fast yeah. Uh, in the production car. Yeah. I mean, in the standard car. So you're not retiring anytime soon, correct? Oh, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> keep I can't, working. no. Well, this is the racing Corvettes, the early years. This is the man that started off. You're a Corvette guy, and you watched Corvette win Le Mans a bunch of times with the last five or six years. It all started right here with John. John, thank you very much, thank my you, friend. Thank you, Jay. Pleasure. Keep racing. Okay. <laughs> and thanks Keep for your service. <laughs> all right. Genuine American hero, John Fitch.